everybody. Today starts the process of building the ultimate drift truck, version two. Well, we never use this calendar anyway, so get rid of the date. It's not even November anymore. So drift truck V2, we got supercharger, other engine upgrades. Look, UPS, Daniel. We're gonna use a new transmission. CD09. New front suspension, S13 suspension. Cage slash chassis. Gonna be doing a half cage, going to be making a new tube front and rear chassis to fit the S13 suspension and the mid fuel tank and rear radiator. I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. I guess I could put uh, a new body, which is going to include four wheel drive bed, a four wheel drive set of fenders, side skirts, spoiler, not like a weird, ugly one, like a drag one I think would be cool, something like that. To go along with that, wheels, brakes, interior, and then to wrap it all up, a wrap. Yeah. It's gotta be a drift truck with Gingy Racing Co. on it. So this is what the drift truck V2 is going to entail. But the first part of the process is to take all the old stuff out. So let's get started. Before we go tearing this thing apart, I want a good starting point. So we're gonna weigh it, see how much the total weight is, front to rear weight balance, because hopefully with a new setup, it's going to be a little bit more even and possibly lighter. All right, nice and zeroed out. So 2,800 pounds. It's pretty light for a truck. I thought the engine was falling, bro. You guys got it. That was terrifying, bro. <laughs> I've seen what you're doing, thankfully. I was just paying attention to the camera, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's go in the garbage. Oops, it slipped. <laughs> she was on her way. Oh my god. Um, hold on a second. How long things been like that? No idea. Oh my god, another one. Goodness gracious. What kind of clutch is this? No idea. Colin's adapter refused to tell me, really? but I think it's just an SR20 uh, clutch kit. This little pilot bearing thing is all fucked up because the input shaft had so much play. So yeah. it was destroying the pilot so bearing. So that's part of the noise. I wonder if, like clearly the input shaft should have gone in further. So I wonder if 
The adapter kit is part of the reason why the input shaft went bad. Probably is. the socket off of the thing. That is wild. Uh, we got the pile bearing out. We got the adapter plate off. We got to put it on the engine stand, but we don't have long bolts. But we have a surprise coming to the shop tomorrow, so we'll wait to put this on the engine stand. Till then, for now, we're gonna keep tearing apart the chassis. The guys over at boltsandnuts.com drove all the way down from Ohio to deliver this beauty. It might not look like much from there, but here and some over there, we have over 5,000 pieces, including metric bolts, both coarse and fine, self tappers, riv nuts, stainless hardware. Plenty of zip ties. This is going to be an absolute game changer for the shop. Something that I've always wanted is my own hardware collection so we don't have to waste time going to Ace Hardware and being disappointed every time too, because they don't they never have metric stuff. The cool thing about boltsandnuts.com is that they're innovating hardware. Say I run out of, you know, I run out of my M6 1.0 60 millimeter long bolts. I want to order more, right? Oh, I don't have to, I have to look it up online, figure where where's the part, part number, blah, blah, blah. Take your phone, QR code, boom. There is the bolt. And you guys can get 10% off from boltsandnuts.com using discount code GINGIUM. So huge thank you to Bolts and Nuts for providing this for the channel. Check them out if you need bolts and nuts. We're gonna be using it a lot, so heck yes. But now that we have this stuff, we can put the 1UZ on the engine stand. We need these.
the tailgate, so that's why we didn't care about that. So we got the bed off, and everything back here is removed besides like this one brake line. It's really cool being, working on a truck is so awesome, just because it's such a blank slate, you can just do anything. The plan is probably to cut it right in front of our four link mount, because this mount's good, so we're gonna keep this mount, we're gonna modify it a bit, but keep this mount, then from here back, make it a tube chassis. But I also might, might keep the, the, the box frame, just because it adds some weight back here. A tube, tube chassis is gonna make it lighter, and that's not what we want back here. We'll see, we'll, we'll figure it out. Either way, definitely redoing everything. Just depends on whether we're gonna keep the box frame or not. Now we're gonna go ahead, remove some front fenders, the hood, front body parts, get that looking like this, uh, and then it's interior. Yeah, bro, if, if I would have known all along that it was four bolts that held this entire thing on, would have made my life so much easier. Let's play a game. How quickly can I get a fender off? <laughs> you're slipping, man. You're slipping. You know, it was going so well. What's going on? Let's see. Classic Mazda. Hey, yo. Six minutes and 50 seconds ish, yeah? 50, yeah. Nice. Special delivery. <laughs> hey, yo. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> Since we're going to be caging this thing, I also probably am going to be making a new trans tunnel. Dash has to come out. It's never fun taking a dash out for a couple reasons. One, you're always going to risk breaking something, but also it's just not fun. Anything under, underneath dashboards with dashboards, dashboards suck. see a magic trick if only it was actually that easy now we're gonna go ahead and take the carpet out take the firewall sound editing out headliner sun thingy a pillar oh. straight to the dumpster I'm going
you can tell, we got the interior all stripped out. And with that, the truck is pretty much as close to a bare chassis as we're gonna get. Eventually we have to take the windshield out and probably the rear window out. And we're gonna do a lot more metal work to cut stuff out. But in terms of just unbolting stuff, this is the result. And this is the part of the build that it's always a little overwhelming. You know, you sit here and you kind of stare at it and all these things are going through my mind on the things that we have to do. It's a bit overwhelming. I will say this is definitely the most confident I've ever been going into a build. Learned a lot, especially with the Eclipse, I learned a lot. So it's, it's gonna be good. Now, one thing I want to do, just to tickle our curiosities, wait, see how many pounds we unbolted in three days. Bro. 630, okay. It's very unlevel the way it's uh, sitting. Like I said, we still have to cut off all of the factory brackets. The strut towers we made, not factory. Subframe, sway bar mounts, all the old mounts. So I mean, this thing's probably gonna get at least 100 pounds lighter before we start adding stuff back to it. Now I will say, the goal of this, this build is not to make a race truck. I want this thing to be very streetable, more streetable than it was before. So we're gonna add heat, we're gonna add sound editing throughout, better sound system, better interior. So it might end up being heavier than it used to be. That's okay, because it's gonna have more horsepower than it used to have. But guys, I think that's it for this first video. I don't know what we're doing in the next video, but if you wanna watch it right now, you can click up there, become a patron, support the channel. You'll get early access to videos and also access to other exclusive stuff. Huge thank you to all of you for watching. Huge thank you to Bolts and Nuts for providing Bolts and Nuts. That's it. See you guys in the next video. Drift Truck V2 coming soon. Increase your testosterone by 50%. So why not just do these ancestral tins? I mean, I got, I got some good edgy <laughs> levels. <laughs>